hello friends once again welcome you back to my channel so in this video we are going to start with uh, stack as subroutine linkage method where we'll be passing parameters and getting back values from the stack from the stack only because in my last video in the last to last videos we have seen we have used subroutine as sorry stack as subroutine linkage method but their parameters and return values are passed through the uh, registers but situation may not be always that uh, favorable that we can end use registers so here we will be using stack for uh, per passing parameters as well as getting back the values from the function along with the linkage that is provides right so when a large number of parameters are required to pass to a function we may not have that many number of general purpose registers left with us suppose we need to pass 20 number of parameters but let's say we do not have your 20 number of general purpose registers available with us. Then we cannot pass parameters using your registers. Then how can we do that? Because our day-to-day -day life activity says that we may have to pass number of parameters, large number of parameters to a function. So if that is so, then how to do it? We cannot use register. So next alternative is memory. So if you pass in memory, you need to remember all their names and all of the variables. So better place is to use Stack. On the stack, we'll pass the parameters as many as we want and we can get back values from my calling function also. So how we can do that? So see, parameters are passed onto the stack before calling the function. This statement, please remember, before we execute the call instruction, uh, that before that, we'll be passing the parameters on the stack. And return values will also come from the stack, right? So see how we're going to do. Suppose we have not started doing anything. Right now my stack pointer is having 2004 and it is having some value 28. It may have any value I have taken as to be 28. Any value you can take. Now see, we will start doing one uh, program. So in this program, what we are going to do, we are going to use subroutine. The subroutine is going to compute addition of n numbers stored at some memory location consecutively. So suppose some memory location, it will store the elements consecutively and number of elements are there. This part will be done by a subroutine. So caller requires the result of this summation. So what are the parameters we need to pass? Where the numbers are stored and how many numbers are there? That we need to pass to the function. So before calling the function, we will pass the parameters on the stack. So move has num1, comma minus sp. This is nothing but a push operation. What we are pushing on the stack? We are passing the num1. Num1 is representing one numeric value that represents the starting address of our number, uh, starting address of the array where our numbers are there. So num1 will be load, the value represented by num1 will be loaded at the top of the stack. Minus sp, so it will become 2004. Here the num1, whatever it is representing, will be stored. So that is 3000. We have taken num1 is representing 3000. That is the base address of my array. Next, we need to pass how many numbers are there in the array. So move n comma minus sp. n value may be anything. We are taking here 10. So it will be pushed at address 1996. So till now, what we have done? We have passed the two parameters on the stack. Now we are going to call the function. So call list add. This is the name of the function. You can write any name. Here we have written list add. So we are calling a function. As you know, when we execute this call instruction, that time implicitly one push operation takes place. So that will also happen here. So what will be pushed onto the stack? The return address. So my here my assumption is that each instruction is of equal length and they are of four bytes. So thousand, thousand four address, thousand eight. Next will be what? Thousand twelve. So that thousand twelve will be stored on the stack. Right, one push operation will take place implicitly. You and me will not write any move. It will take place as part of execution of call instruction. So at 1992, we are going to push the return address. That is 1012. So this is my stack right now, right? So see, when we do this, when we execute this, return address will be pushed onto the stack and PC will be loaded with the starting address of this function. PC will be loaded with the starting address of this subroutine. 
So now our control will move to where? It will move to this particular function. So this part we will see later after coming back from function. Right now we are going to execute this particular function, right? List add. So that we are going to do. So see, right now your stack is like this. From this previous discussion, we saw our stack is like this. Here is my return address. Now we are in the subroutine. Subroutine name is list end. So we are executing the first instruction of the subroutine. Here what I am doing in the subroutine is move multiple R0 through R2 onto the stack. That means we are pushing the values of registers R0, R1, R2 onto the stack. Right? Three push operations we are doing. The point is why we are doing it. Because see these registers R0, R1, R2. There are only one register R. There is only one register R0, R1, R2. So it may be used by the uh, caller also. So suppose caller was having some value here 10, 11, 12. Now inside the function you are going to use this register. So you will make them something suppose 112, 80, 90. You have made the changes. Once you go back from the function, your caller will expect these values to be there. But after this function is executed, the register's value will become what? 112, 80, and 90. That means modifications will be reflected to the caller. This is the problem with our global resources. Registers are global resources. So if we do not save their values once entering the function, then they will be modified by the function and those modifications will be reflected to the caller. Whereas we don't want to see those changes. We want our original values of R0, R1, R2 in our main program right so the, because of that what we are doing at a safe place whatever global resources we are going to use that we will store onto the stack right so three post operations basically we are performing by executing a single move multiple one is move another is move multiple move multiple will uh, uh, move the values of r0 r1 r2 in the successive stack locations Reason behind is understood. So R0, R1, R2, whatever were their contents, those are pushed onto the stack. Now SP is having 1980. This part we have understood. Now we are going to start our execution of this subroutine. So what is the purpose of this subroutine? To add n numbers stored at some memory location, 3000. How many numbers? 10 numbers. So this thing we need to do. So we'll start. What we'll do? will extract our parameters in our subroutine. So where are your parameters? This 10 and 3000. These are your parameters. And where is your stack pointer right now? It is at 1980. So from 1980, at what location? Your 10 is there at 1996. So what is the distance between the two? 16 locations, right? So 16 bytes, they are apart from each other. So what I am doing with this 1980, I am adding what? 16. So value will become what? 1996. But SP will not change. This is index addressing mode. SP plus 16 will take place, but neither of the operands will change. But it will produce one address. That address we used to term as effective address. That is the address of my operand. So my address of operand will become what? 1996. From this memory location, whatever value I will get, that is 10 here that is transferred to r1 is this part is hope this part is clear because see what i am trying to do i am using index addressing mode to get the values of parameters because see i cannot do pop because if i'll do pop these operands will go out my return address will be lost so with respect to sp how my where my uh, parameters are there that much only i'll calculate and that value i'll be taking into r1 Next is, next parameter is at address 2000. So what is their distance? 20. So 20 SP comma R2. So R2 will be holding what? 3000. That is the base address of your array. R1 is holding the counter, the first parameter. And R1 is holding the parameter counter. R2 is holding the base address. This is how parameters are extracted inside the function. This part has to be very, very clear. Next part. Now we will start the processing because we have the parameters. Now we can do the calculation. So clear R0 because this is my placeholder. And then add R2 plus comma R0. 
the first element is added with R0. So if it is 10, so 10 is added with R0. Then decrement R1. The value of counter is decremented. Right? Because how many times you are going to perform the loop? Whatever is the value of count. So we have decremented because we have performed it once. So now it is decremented. And how long you are going to do it? Till the counter is greater than 0. So branch greater than 0 loop. If the condition, if the value of this R1 is greater than 0, then we'll go back to this instruction. And we'll keep on doing this part. Once my counter reaches 0, we'll stop. And once we'll stop, whether we are going to return? No. If you return here only, see what is there on top of the stack? R2's content. That will be given to PC. So we'll go back somewhere else, right? We'll not go back to our caller. So next what I will do, this part is over, means the job of the function is over. Now whatever miscellaneous task you have done, that you need to uh, cancel out, means that uh, this pop operation we will do along with, where is my result? R0. That also I need to give, give it back to my caller. So where I will give it? Into some locations below your return address. Because once you return, all these locations will be popped out. All these locations will be popped out. So these locations will not be there. So due to that, I should not save my return value or there. Somewhere below wherever is your return address is there. That there we can store the return value. So what I have done is move R0, 20 SP. So at 2000 location, we have stored the result of summation process because in, uh, this result is required by the caller. Done. Then what we will do? We will do this part. Means whatever value we have pushed, we will pop it back. So pop will take place in reverse order. First, this value will go to R2, then R1, then R0. Because post uh, that reverse order, if I will do, then only at the correct registers, values will be moved to. So that part is done. Move multiple. Pop operation is over. So once this operation is over, these locations will not be there in the stack. Of the effect of executing this instruction will be this one. These values are popped. Now what is there on top of the stack? 1012. That means we are at the correct position. Now we can perform what? Return from the subroutine. So I'll write return. Once I write return, one implicit pop operation will take place. What it will pop? Top stack content into PC. So PC will hold what? 1012. See, pop operation took place. And PC will be having value what? 1012. So that will take me to where? To my caller. So my caller is this one, 1012. I'll come back here. So after coming back here, my stack is looking like this. Right? Where is your SP? It is here. Now see, where is your result? At this location. You need to take back the result. So to get back the result, from 1996, how far your result is located? Four distance apart. So four SP, comma sum. So with SP, we have added 4 and that location is 2000. From this location, we got the value into the variable sum. So this, this is how we have taken the, extracted the result from the stack. This part is clear. Now see, when you have started doing this code, that time on the stack, only 2004 was the stack pointer value and here 28 was there. So now my function is over, whatever I have done with the stack, that part is over. So now my stack should look like this only, not these two values should be there. So what I will do, I need to pop these two values. So instead of popping, because pop will take the values to some place, I don't require those values anymore. So simply what I will do, my SP was here, now I'll make my SP to this location. Pointing SP to this location means these locations are not there anymore, right? So what I am doing is, add has 8 comma sp because from 96 2004 is how far it is apart eight locations so here i am adding 8 with sp so sp is really getting changed so sp value will become what 2004 that means stack pointer will come here these two locations are not there anymore so this is the way by which we are releasing the spare sorry releasing the space uh, used by the stack in case of parameter passing or returning values whenever we are using a function call. So this is all about in this video. In next video, I'll do a numerical. Thank you. And if you're getting from my videos, then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.